Good afternoon and welcome to United TV. Uh, today, we have a very special guest joining us, a renowned expert in real estate industry, a true visionary in the field. He's none other than the, only, uh, the one and the only one, uh, Robert Buccini. With his innovative approach and insightful perspectives, Rob has made a significant impact in the real estate world. His work is not only inspiring, but also instrumental in shaping the future of downtown Wilmington and the other parts of the country. We are truly honored to have Rob here with us today to share his wisdom, experience, and uh, valuable insight. Rob Buccini, uh, how are you doing? I'm good. Thank you so much, Kamal, for having me on the, on the call. I really appreciate this uh, Zoom. Uh, it is uh, very flattering. It's our uh, honor to have you. Thank you again. So um, a lot of people, they already know you. Uh, so, but we still want to get to know you a little bit more. If you can tell us about your uh, background uh, on the personal side, uh, so then we can kind of get to know you a little bit more. And then I have some sure. specific questions related to the Butchini group. Sure. Um, well, I was born and raised here in Wilmington. Uh, when I was born, my uh, parents brought me back. We live with my grandmother. Um, on uh, South DuPont Street. So, you know, from the office here in Wilmington, uh, I can, you know, see out our ninth floor window, uh, the church that we uh, we grew up going to, St. Anthony. So I haven't uh, gone very far uh, from my youth. Um, I was uh, bused to uh, Greenville Elementary um, when uh, I was living in the city and um, had a learning issue, which uh, allowed me or caused me to go to Wilmington Friends School um, I graduated from Wilmington Friends School after being there for over a decade. Uh, blessed to have done that. Uh, had a, had a, a great uh, educational and uh, and uh, athletic experience. Won uh, won a state championship in football, um, and was always uh, a gym rat. So was at all the different gyms throughout the city, playing basketball or football or you know running track, lifting weights. Um, you know, out of the left, I can see the uh, Central Y. Uh, and that's where I spent most summers, you know, working out uh, to play high school and college football. So the city clearly is very near and dear to me. Um, I feel like I do know every inch. Uh, I think a lot of people that uh, don't know me, um, they don't realize, you know, how uh, part of the fabric, uh, you know, I, I feel like I am and how, you know, I've known so many people over the years um, because of, uh, of, of, you know, being born and raised here playing sports. And so I've, I've been blessed. Uh, we went on in uh, 30 years ago, I started our company, Buccini Poland Group. We built a, a very small warehouse in Aston, Delaware County, Pennsylvania. And from there, uh, we've grown into a company that has uh, assets literally throughout the country. Um, we have uh, owned and managed almost 14,000 hotel rooms from the uh, Portland, Oregon to Texas, uh, down to Florida, up to New York City. Uh, Wilmington is where I come to every day. Um, we're a five day a week office. And uh, I think one of the things I'm most proud of is that um, we, um, we, we have in the city, uh, we employ in and around the city, 1100 uh, colleagues of mine. So it's something that, um, you know, I could not be more proud of. So, uh, and, and I think that's our employees are my colleagues, the associates of BPG, um, they being uh, part of the fabric has also helped us to, I think, do a very good job um, in our community endeavors. Absolutely. So, well, I know a lot of people um, admire what you have done uh, and you and your family. So I don't want to take any credit from your brother, uh, Chris uh, Buccini. Um, now, you and I, we met uh, in December 2023, although I think we have probably met in the past uh, in different committees. Uh, I was just going through some of my emails. So we were on same yes. email. Yeah, for sure. In, um, end of 2000, 2000, uh, uh, thousand nine to 2012 period. So, and I don't want to, like, I'm just saying this so that I don't want to lie about this. So like, but I don't remember us having any conversation, but we actually decided to have a lunch meeting. Um, 
that was last December. Uh, I enjoyed that very much. And then one of the reasons that we have that is because United Medical, uh, we have two United Medicals from uh, my side. One is our business uh, entity, United Medical LLC. And the other one is United Medical uh, Clinic. Now, um, you uh, suggested something at that time, and we did follow your suggestion. <laughs> And now actually a, more, a marketing a marketing tidbit <laughs> so yeah. we are officially uh, for our medical side we are officially united medical associates our signs will be updated in the next uh, hopefully couple of weeks um but one of the things that i want to uh, kind of share with everyone who's actually who may have maybe a little bit difficulty understanding our conversation that we are going to have so uh united medical associates on the medical side we have a small office on Gilpin Avenue. It was one of our offices, our main office is in uh, Becks Woods, um, down in Bear. We have an office in Smyrna and Dover, and our downtown office was small. So we had two options. Either we were gonna actually close that office because it was small for us, or we were gonna actually take the opportunity and take advantage of a lot of good stuff has happened in the city of Wilmington. So. Uh, I don't know if I told you this, but I live uh, I live in Westover. It's about 2.2 miles from where our United Medical Associates is. So on a Sunday, I actually uh, was looking for an office uh, after our real estate um, agent said there isn't much available because we told them, I guess, we didn't want to be in downtown. So then parking, I started, I'm sure, was, parking, I'm sure, is something that was important to you. Sure. So, but then uh, on this um, uh, November, right before Thanksgiving, it may be right after Thanksgiving, a couple of years ago, I'm on the FaceTime with my with my dad, and then I started walking from my house. It took about forty five minutes. I was probably walking sl slow, and boom, I see uh, this sign for uh, sale uh, sale sign for six hundred Delaware Avenue, and. And immediately I said, well, this should be our next office for uh, our Gilpin should be moved to here. And that's when I realized someone like yourself uh, and your company uh, and what you have brought to Wilmington, where uh, maybe 10 years ago, I wouldn't be able to do that. Just because well, we I, I, I thank you. The, the, um, the, I think the key to us um, in Wilmington is that we were able to invest a enormous amount of money in an area that was relatively concentrated so um, that uh, people were able to see the tangible results of that. Um, and then, you know, one of the things that surprised people is we are the biggest champions of anyone else who wants to invest in the city even if it's competitive to us. So I have several friends of, of mine that are building you know, housing in the city and people would say, are you worried about the competition? I said, no, I said, what we really need in Wilmington is because the city had struggled mightily, you know, from the late sixties, you know, for 20 plus 20, 25 years. And so we had so much, uh, uh, you know, decades of underinvestment in the city that we have to, to make up on and having the ability to, you know, make significant investments in an, in a defined area allows us to, you know, have additional security, security mining cameras, uh, making sure that the area is, you know, very, very clean. And, you know, we've done all this literally without, without the, displacing a person. So there's, you know, the talk of gentrification, you know, are we gentrifying? And, you know, gentrification, you know, one of the definitions is that we have to move out people. So every building that we have purchased has been vacant with the exception of one that had a uh, retail on the ground floor that was leased expired and they were in the process of moving out. And this is literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of properties that we purchased in the city. And, you know, we will get um, comments, oh, well, you're building luxury housing. But I think what people forget is, you know, if there would be no shop rate, like we were very successful in convincing the Kenny family um, 
to come to the city of Wilmington. We invested, I don't know, $50 million to, to bring them or, you know, the Chase Center where we've never turned away a young athlete in the city of Wilmington that wants to aspire to be an elite player. You know, the, the, the movie theaters, things like that, where, you know, are, are things that everyone in a city needs and are accessible to. So I think some of the, the critics would say, you know, they only point to maybe the fancy restaurant as opposed to the kind of the breadth of what we do. And, um, you know, fortunately uh, from being here and uh, as you know, it's uh, Wilmington's a place to be somebody and everyone knows everyone um, that, uh, that I, you know, people know really what I'm about, um, what my brother, our family's about and what our company's about. So. So from the business side and we'll get into your uh, current projects but I just want to, as a businessman, I also kind of look up to someone like yourself um, who uh, took the business to a next level. So what was the breaking point for you guys? Like now you are kind of like, you are not, we are not in the same, uh, you know, uh, same league anymore. So you're at the next level. So um, <laughs> what's the, what was the breaking point for you guys? So um, in the early nineties, uh, we were building small industrial uh properties, you know, basically little warehouses. And I um, had some uh, friends that worked uh, in New York City in the real estate world, and they had connected uh, me with Lehman Brothers. So as, as you all, as most people know, Lehman Brothers was a massive investment bank um, that subsequently went out of business in 2008 okay. because of the real estate investments. But they um, backed us when the DuPont company was selling their downtown complex in, here in Wilmington, where, where my office is actually in the brain of my building, which is one of the four buildings that we uh, have bought from the DuPont company. And what they did, you know, back then I was, you know, I was 29, single. I, mean, I think I had $60,000 in credit card debt, uh, maybe, you know, uh, a few months rent in my checking account. So it really had not had any savings with everything that we had generated you know, in the early 80s through um, the late, the, the, I'm sorry, through the early 90s, through the late 90s until, you know, 2000 was every dollar we had made, we invested back into the company um, to do our next projects. And so Lehman came and they basically financed the entire deal for us, allowed us to purchase the DuPont complex. Um, I was 29. And, uh, you know, I, I think back every day, like, what uh, were they thinking? I mean, I remember went through the, the central utility plant that powers about 5 million square feet of space here in the city of Wilmington that was underneath the DuPont building. And I did not know what a, how a steam plant worked. I didn't know what a chiller was. Um, and so I went to the bookstore and that's how I learned about the complex that we acquired. At least I had a working knowledge. I'm always cognizant of something that John Rollins um uh, junior had said to me is always surround yourself by smarter people. So at, at that point, when we had gotten scale from just really being a small company, I was the accounts payable person, the accounts receivable person, uh, Dave Paul and my partner, he might've had uh, one person uh, that worked with him. Um, I had uh, uh, two people that worked with me. And, um, and what we did was we continued to reinvest we were able to convince with our business plan, Lehman Brothers, to, to back us. And it turned out to be a great deal. It was a great, it was a great investment for Lehman. Uh, we own the complex today. We've since bought, bought out our partners in the complex over the years. And uh, it was really, uh, I think what we did was we just lived and breathed our projects um, for you know a decade. I, you know, I didn't get married to my 33rd birthday. So I didn't have a ton of distractions, you know, as you know, today I have four children. So, you know, I'd go home at night at eight, nine, 10 o'clock at night, often maybe after a stop at, in Trolley Square to meet some friends. And then I just would work till midnight, get back up the next morning at six, seven o'clock and, you know, rinse and repeat. So that's pretty much uh, what, we, what we all do, right? Yeah, that's what so, you do. You know, you know, building your company, that's what you have to right. do. Yeah. You know? So now, um, I want to discuss two of your new projects, um, and uh, I think especially one of them, um, from the real estate standpoint, bringing the city like Wilmington back into life, I guess. Um, 
I'm always worried that uh, we were going to become one of the like the, like the Baltimore Junior, and I that was my nightmare for yeah. for a long time. But um, now I, I guess we are on the right track, and then uh, everything looks much better. Probably, um, you know, we have to give some credit to Joe Biden while he was the vice president and the president uh, during his time. That also kind of probably helped the city a little bit. For um, sure. Right. So, yeah, I mean, the, the, just the, uh, the the press and the notoriety that we received right. um, as a city. I mean, that's, you know, literally billions of dollars of PR that we would never get. Uh, I know people, you know, sometimes will complain about the traffic that right. he brings. But, you know, every time I see that, uh, I see that traffic uh, that he occasionally brings. Um, and that's just economic development uh, for the city. It's it's the, the some of the best right. uh so I think I think that helps. Like um, some people, yes, you're right. I mean, some people may complain about uh, here and there with the traffic, but look, um, if you uh, if the state is going to benefit from it, because it's not one individual is benefiting, the state is benefiting from yeah. it. And, and the I'll, restaurants, the hotels, taxes to the to the county for the for all the hotel tax. You know, it's it's really it's a massive investment. It's like having a, another Fortune 500 company here. Uh, definitely. Now, one thing that what I was about to say is that during this transition, um, I think it's really important to have, like, of course, having different projects are good, but having the mixed use developments, which I believe that's one of the things that you are doing right now. Yeah. Uh, if we can start with that, with the uh, Market West project, it's about 230 million. Uh, that's these are the information sure. that you get from your website. So we can start with that, which is kind of more. Um, at least the way that I'm looking at it is more special because it's again this uh, mixed use development which has a long term impact and a really good quality uh, that it brings. So, can we talk about that a little bit? Yes. Um, so, Market West is a uh, over a two million square foot uh, project that we have. Uh, there's new construction. There's a lot of historic renovation. It comprises the Hotel Dupont. Um, it comprises 101 DuPont, which is a historic renovation of the old DuPont uh, building into 192 uh, apartment units. We have restaurants, food halls. And, and what it's about is creating um, energy in the center of our city, which is, as you know, the center of commerce for the state of Delaware. And you know, when DuPont had announced that they were going to leave and vacate this and take with them, you know, the 10,000 people, you know, fortunately, and, and, and we were blessed, they only moved a few miles outside of downtown into brand new, uh, brand new space. Uh, Camores um, then relocated into spectacular office space, which is part of Market West. Um, and, uh, and so what we were able to do was we were able to save a, a 10 block by 10 block area of the city um, from being vacant, desolate, and activate the ground floor with retail, with shopping, with gyms, and uh, and housing. And there's an article uh, this week in the Wall Street Journal about St. Louis, and it talked about what went wrong in St. Louis, how the core of the downtown uh, during COVID um, was decimated because you already started to see a disinvestment in the city um, you started seeing companies move out of the downtown. That was exacerbated by COVID. And what happened in Wilmington, and you know, I give all the credit in the world to Mayor Brzezicki and to uh, uh, our Governor Carney, and we have two amazing uh, U.S. Senators and a wonderful, uh, incredibly bright uh, Congresswoman, is people leaned into the city um, and they backed the police. Um, they took the opportunity to fix streets and utilities that were in disrepair while there weren't the, the 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 amount of people that would typically be in the downtown. So when people started returning to the downtown, which Market West is part of, they found something that had been improved in the you know the year or two year absence during COVID. So we are pressing the accelerator on that. Um, we have about two blocks away and, and I'll turn it back to you. Uh, 243 unit uh, uh, apartment complex, high rise that's under construction now uh, that, you know, is just within blocks of the Market West. And I, I, I think what you'll see um, from all of this is more foot traffic, which is the key to success of any downtown. Downtowns 
can no longer just be office. For a downtown to succeed, it needs to be mixed use, you know, as you alluded to. So now the other big project, I guess, uh, these days you guys are uh, pursuing is uh, the press. Uh, this is a $90 million uh, development um, uh, on 801 North Orange Street. Yes. Uh, tell us about that a little bit. Yeah, it's right next to our Midtown apartment complex, which is uh, 200 uh, uh, units as well. So in that one block area, as you mentioned, at 8th and Orange, we'll have about 600 people living there. It's a block off of Mark Street. As you know, uh, we have a few dozen uh, ground floor retailers that we've helped start over the last decade. Um, and the nice thing about the, the press and the adjacent existing buildings is that these people um, that will eventually move in there when the apartment is done, uh, when people start moving in there into the press in February of next year, is that will further activate, you know, the downtown. It will help the Mark Street merchants. It's important to note that we do affordable housing. Uh, we have uh, four affordable housing projects on Market Street. Uh, the I think our signature one is in the um, former Wispus Bank headquarters at 9th and Market. So you know, I think people don't always realize we take vouchers um, and uh, a lot of this has been done because of the uh, availability at the time of the state's low-income housing tax credits. So, uh, Rob, one of the uh, one of the things that I'm always kind of um, like when I'm processing the city of Wilmington, uh, you and your company also developed uh, the Riverfront uh, project, yeah. which uh, turned out to be a successful project. Although initially there were a lot of reservations from people, yeah. so you took a big risk. Uh, and I don't know if you guys made a lot of money from that or not, but I know it was a big risk. Uh, now, uh, 15, almost years later, we see the impact of Riverfront. Um, but do you think Riverfront is kind of competing with the downtown? It, you know, initially what um, our concern was, and when we built the Christianity Landing Complex, which, as, as many people know, across from the... Uh, the Biden train station um, on the Christina River. There's the two high rises and uh, uh, 60 plus townhomes. We were concerned that the center of gravity would move towards the, the riverfront. And the riverfront in many ways was easier because you know under Carper, uh, Mike Brzezicki and Mike Harris leadership of the riverfront, that would be then, then governor, but now Senator Carper, um, they were able to assemble with the Petnero family, you know, tracks and tracks and tracks of land. Um, I mean, I think it's uh, close to 100 acres of land. That was really, um, it was former tanneries. It was junkyards. There was a place that I used to go to uh, when I was working as a, as a construction worker in the summer when I was in high school, Bell Supply. But it, I didn't. I I used to go down there to this old company, Bell Supply, that was a plumbing supply house to pick things up for work. And I had no idea there was a river behind the building, like just no idea there was a river down there. And it was overgrown. It was, as, you, as everyone knows, contaminated. And um, so there was no displacement that occurred uh, because of, of that. And the Petnero family, you know, Verena Petnero took a massive gamble on buying, you know, what was contaminated land and it turned out to be an incredible success story. So the, the, the great thing is that the success that we had down there on the housing front really gave us and many other developers the courage to build in the downtown. And, you know, for decades, the 80s, the 90s, you know, 2000, um, the, the one um, uh, economic development driver that had been missing had been residential in the downtown. And so it made it easier to bring residential in the downtown that we were able to prove it successful on the riverfront. Yeah, and I think riverfront did turn out really nice. Um, yeah. I do there every once in a while uh, to walk my dog. Um, but one of the reasons, especially, especially in the winter time, it's kind of like it's a safe place. Yeah. It's kind Very of safe. Yeah. 20 years ago, you uh, people would call me crazy to go there, but now. Yeah. Uh, it's a safer place to go there uh, because it's, there's light, there's 
security. There is a lot of there are a lot of people. I think that's um, that did turn out. Uh, we, we moved um, our office uh, building. Uh, we built an office building when we were building all the stuff on the riverfront uh, to A and South Walnut Street. And one of the reasons we did that was to anchor um, that area so that, that we had brought in, you know, 100 plus uh, uh, workers there. Mm -hmm. um, and it really helped to connect Southbridge to um, to Christina Landing and, and really give a sense of security. You know, obviously having workers there, lights on at night, the you know, street lights, that all was very helpful. And I think that was a big turning point in terms of the perception of security is when we moved uh, to the riverfront, our company. We've since now moved down to Market West um, and uh, to you know, kind of oversee our next big project here. Very good. So now uh, when you become the public figure and <laughs> when everyone knows you, <laughs> um, so that, like, I, I have, I steal this from, um, Spider-Man, so the great power comes with great responsibilities, <laughs> yeah. so, right? So there are, uh, that brings some um, uh, good and bad attention to you and to your group. And when I was actually just researching uh, for this event, uh, one of the things that uh, people, it's like in, on both sides, actually, the preservation of historical buildings. And yeah. again, in my opinion, what I have seen uh, so far, it's all good, um, positive impact, including yeah. the old buildings that you guys had. Oh, you have done the uh, the Queen uh, the, on Market Street, what you guys did there. Yeah, the Queen, yeah. Many people don't even understand how much work that involves and how much probably investment is needed. And you guys took that risk. And I have a positive uh, opinion on this, but there are some people who uh, have uh, different opinions on that. Uh, what would you say uh, from the Buccini group standpoint uh, with the preservation of historical buildings? How are you guys doing? Yeah, well, uh, we've purchased 82 buildings along Market Street. Every single one of them was in disrepair. Um, most of the buildings that we purchased, you had to go into them with hazmat suits on as a precautionary measure as you demo them. Uh, those who've been in the Queen, you might have seen the before and after pictures. Uh, the Queen was collapsing. It had no roof. Water, uh, every time it rained, it would drain into the ground floor. Um, and uh, it had been vacant like that uh, so long that when it was last in, um, in use, it was segregated by color, um, by race. So it really uh, uh, it shows you how long Mm -hmm. uh, these uh, uh, buildings had been vacant. And so uh, we have won, uh, I think, four of the top awards for our historic renovation in in, uh, in the downtown. Um, you know, again, I mentioned uh, the, the former Whistler's building at 9th and Market, 830 Market. It's one of the nicest apartment buildings we have. Like I said, it's an affordable housing uh, project. I mean, buildings like that, the Queen, um, where Bardea is. I mean, they're just spectacular um, redevelopments uh, and reuses and, and obviously very green when you're not demolishing the building and you're trying to save a new building. Um, and, you know, there was, um, in 2008, the, the, um, there was a, a writer for the News Journal. Her name was, um, let me think about it, Maureen Milford. Maureen mm -hmm. Milford. And she... Um, would criticize our efforts. And, you know, I, I'd asked her and other people, um, well, if you don't want us to do what we're doing, we're open to opinions. What are the alternatives? And right. no one ever suggested the alternative. I mean, what, a lot of people were like, we really need a grocery store because where the shop right is, it was a food desert for both the East Side and Southbridge and, and what was happening on the riverfront and, and you know, the bottom of Browntown. And so we did things um, that uh, uh, were required, but also we thought uh, were going to be profitable. And, you know, in our business, when you invest you know, several billion dollars and, and have uh, 1,100 colleagues in and around the city, you know, you have to make sure that your company's profitable. You know, I come to work every day with a huge responsibility, knowing that, you know, many, many people depend on their salary. And I think when you put it in that context, people understand more. So no one ever said to us, um, what 
they thought we should do. Everyone always wants you know more affordable housing. We agree there needs to be more affordable housing. Uh, I'm really proud that uh, what you see um, the former Riverside, you know, Reach Riverside. Uh, you know, I went to uh, uh, I was one of the first people that went to Atlanta to pitch the project to come uh, to what I was there with uh, Charlie McDowell and, and Mike and Mayor Przicki, Mike Przicki. And, you know, so I, I ran the Wilmington Housing Partnership. So during that period, you realize the importance of housing. So I'm very proud about my contri my contributions, and our company's contributions to affordable housing. Um, and that is something that uh, we need more of. Um, and that really is done with, uh, you need housing tax credits. Because as, as you read in the paper, with inflation, you know, the cost of housing is through the roof. And the only way to subsidize that is, uh, is, is through the tax credit program the state has. Uh, again, I'm going to say this. So uh, like making everyone happy, uh, that's not the business that I'm in. And I know that's not <laughs> the business that you're in because we are not going to be able to make everyone happy. Yeah. If they have an opinion. If they uh, can come up with different projects, options, of course. But if there's nothing you are doing and these places are idle and yeah. someone goes in there and then puts a lot of investment uh, and it's happening. So yeah. like Bardia, uh, you mentioned, is one of the best restaurants, not only in Wilmington, but probably in the East Coast. Yeah, for so, sure. Yeah. Um, and they opened another one, and I think they're opening one more uh, around. Yeah, yeah across the street, for sure. And yeah. I've been there several times, and having having a restaurant like Bardia in, the, in downtown, it's, it's amazing. So yeah. you don't have to drive to Philadelphia if you have guests or if you just want to have some good time. And, and those uh, types of investors are coming in because of the investments that you guys have done. So, uh, but again, if there are good options, uh, alternatives, so uh, we- Right, are... and the, you know, the coin is another, uh, uh, I think, fabulous historic renovation that our company undertook. And one of the great things about that is, uh, you know, we had these surveys, surveys to the 5,000 residents that live in our properties uh, in the city uh, Wilmington and uh, you know a rooftop. You know, so I live in Wilmington, but I went to visit a friend in Atlanta. Uh, we went to a rooftop in downtown Atlanta. Why don't we have one of those here? And and I think people are aspirational and they want the same things that their friends have in other cities. And so right. we built the coin, and the first thing on our list in the design was we wanted to have a really wonderful rooftop. And so you you have that, and you know you go to these properties, the diversity of the clientele, uh, of the employment base. It's, it's really impressive. And I, I think, uh, you know, when I drive home at night and I I have these great pictures, the before pictures and the after pictures of, of what the downtown right. looked like, you know, it makes it easy to sleep at night knowing that you've changed so many people's lives. You've changed the city. And we've been a, a great uh benefactor of great mayors. We've had a series of wonderful mayors. Uh, my mentor, uh, Ted Blunt, longtime city council president, he, you know, you, you realize, you know, the stars were aligned and God was looking over you uh, just because you had these men that were, you know, my father's age um, that looked after you in the early stages of the career. And, and I was obviously very fortunate to have uh, two very supporting parents, but, you know, it, it takes a village. And uh, at the early part of our um, business, you know, the village were these you know, great leaders in the city that helped us. And, you know, Jim Baker was, uh, uh, if you know him, he was, I'd go to these meetings when I was, uh, as my mid twenties and the things he'd say, you know, they resonate as if it were yesterday. And, uh, you, know, I, you know, he's a, he's a scholar, you know, a well, well-read person. And those kind of key things he told us for the city to be successful has been the key to our long-term strategy. So um, no, that's, that's great. And now one of the other uh, areas that you guys are in is the sports. Um, yes. Now you own uh, one of the soccer teams, right? The... Yep, co-founder and uh, co-owner of the Philadelphia Union. Uh, we started the team here in Wilmington at uh, 11th and Market. Uh, it's in Chester, obviously very proximate to the city. 
of Wilmington. And uh, one of the things I'm most proud of is a lot of the players live in the state of Delaware. And uh, uh, so we, 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 uh, last night I was actually at dinner with um, uh, several of the players at uh, the Philadelphia Union Foundation dinner. And as I was leaving, there's about 12 of the coaches, support staff, and players that were there, and we were all getting our cars that had Delaware license plates. So I, I was really uh, uh, excited, and it was a point of pride that you know we brought this level of professional sports. And then we also uh, owned the Chase Fieldhouse uh, on the riverfront. We brought the Blue Coats uh, there, and we have a youth sports program where we, we have about two million people a year visit our facilities here in Delaware, be it Kirkwood soccer complex which you manage the chase field chase field house and uh and we run uh, actually a youth soccer program called sporting ac across you know called brotherly love and uh lamar mason has a an incredible basketball uh um, component to the field house. so so we touch a lot of people in a lot of different ways um from uh, you know the real estate side sports side one thing that many people don't know is we couldn't get Starbucks to come to the city of Wilmington, you know, a decade ago. Or so, so after four or five years of begging them to open a Starbucks, um, they finally said, well, we won't open it, but we'll give you the license agreement to operate Starbucks in the city of Wilmington. So I always joke, you know, if you come into Starbucks in Wilmington, we operate them. They're our colleagues or my, 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 my work associates. And so we're one of the few companies in America that actually can build the, coffee shop and also make the latte and uh uh so you know it, it just shows you the level of detail that and work that we had to go to so to 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 make you know wilmington uh the place it is today and i i know your son also is a good soccer player <laughs> the reason i know this is because we have a common friend um dr uh carlo and uh anna valencia yes They're yeah they are teammates with your son I spent, I think, every weekend for the last decade with them on the sidelines. It's, <laughs> they're great people. So now they are in the downtown uh, United Medical uh, office. Uh, they actually moved from their other office uh, as of January. Um, so I, I was coming in the office and I, uh, one morning I saw that you had started, you know, a significant investment in uh, your United Medical building downtown, and I was so pleased. And and that's the best thing I think that people in our company see is when um, someone else is making investment. And, you know, obviously the architecture, the quality investment that you made, I mean, that's, that's really what makes a city self sustaining. And I guess as Jim Baker once told me, Rob, if you're not moving forward, you're moving backwards. And to see all these forward progress is, is unbelievable. And, you know, having a quality medical healthcare, uh, two blocks away. I mean, that's that's really important to our residential and our and our workforce base. You know, I I, I think I remember telling you this. Uh, I was surprised that you didn't actually buy our building. So I <laughs> tell I tell some of my doctors. I told them the other day. Well, uh, Rob Buccini maybe owns the entire city, but I own <laughs> this building in the city. So and you're, you're in the the best located building. <laughs> so it's really an interesting building. So. Uh, and then we uh, have finished the um, uh, build out now. Uh, Susan Anderson, uh, our chief operating officers, that was one of her um, really, uh, projects. Uh, and now our business office is going to be uh, in downtown. Uh, right. We we couldn't afford your building, so we are <laughs> eight hundred dollar avenue. We are going to be as of May fifteenth. Our uh, office here is going to move, uh, and then right. we'll. So we'll start uh, working on our second surgery center. Well, you'll uh, you'll have to come. Dan Butler um, is opening a restaurant right next door. I don't know if you read about it in the Delaware, on, <laughs> Delaware online yesterday. So mm -hmm. we'll have to meet there for lunch soon and make sure you, you please send your. Well, this um, time, um, this time, I'll pay because last time you didn't let me pay because it was your own <laughs> restaurant. So. <laughs> yeah, so this time we'll uh, you'll you'll be paying. Right. Dan does a great job with food, so we're we're thrilled that he's going to open up um, later this month. All right. Well, um, I know you are busy, and I know probably a lot going on on your day, and uh, I really appreciate you taking time. 
uh, and spending that time with us. Uh, I, I started this during the um, uh, right after pandemic, just for our patients and employees because they were home. Patients were all telemedicine that time. And since then, we actually stick to it. And uh, I, I'm sure you saw some of our other events. Uh, we brought um, almost all politicians who are running for election in 2024. Uh, they were with us in the last yeah. eight months. Um, and we are going to keep bringing them. Uh, we have other people who are joining us. We have a bariatric Friday we call for our um, uh, weight loss surgery program. So, uh, and like having uh, people like yourself is always uh, fun. And uh, also, I'm sure a lot of young people uh, who uh, uh, see you as a role model uh, can get to know you. Uh, yeah. Better. And that was kind of our uh, our purpose and reasoning for today's uh, event. And I appreciate, again, you joining us. Thank you so much. Well, I'm honored, and uh, thank you so much for including me today. Uh, of really we'll see you soon. Nice afternoon. All right. All right, Sean, uh, you can join us. Um, this was a good conversation with uh, Rob Buccini. Uh, I know he's busy with probably as a full schedule. So um, last week we had a little technical issue, which uh, we were able to make up for. Uh, so uh, this was a good event. Yeah, uh, I think it went pretty well. Um, we got a lot of insight on obviously past projects and kind of the work and time frame and investment and even the risk that you're saying that it took on to complete those, but then also looking ahead at maybe some of hinting at sort of some of the plans of the future for Wilmington. But like you said, even different parts with downtown versus the riverfront. Um and kind of just seeing it all come together. Uh thought it was it went, went pretty well. So uh, I think also it's like uh, for understanding the difficulty that they go through and the criticism that they may be getting uh, as he was saying people are not really come up with uh, alternatives, but they have opinions, right? So, yeah. uh, and you can't yeah. really stop. You have to move uh, forward, and yeah. that's how we are going to actually make uh, better uh, futures for our uh, people. So, uh, I do admire uh, what he has done, what they are doing. His brother and his other partner, uh, uh, I didn't oh. meet him, Paul. So maybe uh, we'll bring uh, one of these days. We'll bring his brother and the other partner as well, and uh, we'll be back with Bariatric Friday in fifteen minutes. Um, we'll see you guys soon. Already, thank yeah. you. Bye bye.